Hello, welcome to Subjective Insights. Today, I'm gonna to talk about magic, right? Now then, everything is magic. According to Alistair Crowley, magic is just doing what you will, you know, uh, or, or achieving an effect at a distance. But um, if you look at the more traditional forms of magic, like the ritualistic forms of magic, and you go through Alistair Crowley's book called Magic, he has many rituals. Um, you know, you draw a pentagram in the ground, you put candles at the five points and you encircle the pentagram and you utter some words and you say some things and you do stuff with some in instruments like knives and that. And um, that's supposed to funnel your energy. That form of magic, I, I'm not sure if it exists in, um, in reality. I've never experienced it myself. Now, if any of my watchers, um, even now or in the future, have or do engage in that form of ritualistic magic and they believe it's efficacious, then please invite me along. I would love to join in. But what I'm going to attempt to show here is that even science, which is supposed to be like diametrically opposite to what we consider to be magic, is still magic, right? So with, with the, the magician, he, he, he's, he's supposed to be working with certain techniques that achieve certain things. I'm not sure how noisy that is in comparison to this. Fucking tractors, combine harvesters. Anyway, so... Um, and he's supposed to be manipulating energy patterns. That's what the magician is supposed to be doing. But if you look at, say, the scientist or the engineer, what they've done in the example of, say, a combustion engine in a car is they've observed a reality. They've observed explosions happening and they've noticed that certain things happen every time a thing explodes and that different substances explode in different ways. So petrol explodes in a different way to diesel, which both of them explode in a different way to, say, gunpowder under in the contained environment. So just as the traditional magician performs a ritual to exert his will upon reality, so too does the engineer. And within this ritual that the engineer performs, there is language, there is manipulation of tools, there is even diagrams, like the pent well, not the pentagram within that, but diagrams still, you know, plans. And um, what they're invoking and trying to contain with this ritual is like you could even call it the, the demon Ifrit or the genie Ifrit, you know, the, the god of fire. And so what, what the engineer does is he arranges around himself some materials to contain the explosion and he utters words to other people because in most manufacturing processes nowadays it's impossible to do it on your own. And even if you do do it on your own, often our memory is not capacious enough to contain within it everything that's necessary for the operation. So you have a grammar, you know, a kind of textbook that contains all, that, that does the memory for you. And so he arranges these pieces around him and then he acts upon them. He utters words like, bring me the wrench, um, put down the casing, all that kind of stuff. And then lo and behold, once the ritual is complete, you have this talisman, this object called an engine that you can carry around with you. Well, not carry around with you, they're quite heavy, you pull it in a car. But that's gonna perform as you want it to reliably in the future. Now then the only difference between an engine and say a crystal talisman, crystals yet again, another thing, I have no experience of being efficacious and I haven't really tried, so I don't have access to the verification procedure for crystals doing what they're supposed to do. But um, the only difference between, say, an older talisman, like a raffia cloth kind of bracelet that the ancient Navajo Indians would have produced, and um, the good luck charms and the four-leaf clovers, and um, the engine, is that the um, engine just is proven to be more efficacious in achieving its end and you don't need to perform cognitive kind of somersaults in order to um, make it out to be doing what you say it's doing. You know, you can, you can see cars moving all the time. The combustion engine does actually work. But it's a form of magic, so science is magic. This is also told, seen if you look at the history of science, it arose out of occultic practices. You know, you have like John Dee. I went to the science, the Museum of Science, of the History of Science in Oxford with my mother last year. 
and you see that science came out of all the alchemical kind of like operations that people were doing and maybe the difference between that form of magic and the modern form of magic called science is that the previous form of magic relied heavily upon tradition so they would they, they would be going to text supposedly written by Solomon you know there's the keys of Solomon or the Clavi Solomon claviculus I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right um, but but yet again even that is still present within modern day scientific practice people go to universities in order to learn a tradition and this is one of the main things that impedes the progress of science there's a guy called Thomas Kuhn who wrote um, Scientific Revolutions and he talked about paradigm shifts that um, most of scientific practice most of the time is trying to get the data to fit currently existing models um, the impression most people have is, is that the models and the theories come out of the data but really they precede the data and they're, they're, they're frameworks within which you can solve certain puzzles but other puzzles that arise may not be soluble and so um, a particular theory or framework or kind of grimoire if you will, spell book, is, is used um, until a new one originates and, and the new theory does not originate solely from the data. They are creative acts on the part of like theorists. Um, so like Newtonian physics was not supplanted by a new theory for hundreds of years, despite the fact that it could not solve certain problems like perturbations in the orbits of certain moons around Saturn, I think, or maybe perturbations in the orbit of Venus. Um, yet it persisted because it was effective for normal one of the mill kind of engineering until Einstein came along and out of nowhere pff, he came up with the theory of relativity, a sudden little twist of thought which wasn't, it, I mean it was motivated by the presence of data, it was motivated by the presence of data that was insoluble which was, um, what's the word for it, that could not be um, made sense of or unified within the prior models so that gave the motivation for the creative endeavour, but the creative endeavour did not come out of the data. If it came out of the data purely, then you'd write the data on a sheet and boom, you'd have relativity, which just is not so. Anyway, science is magic. Everything is magic. Um, most people, they've had their capacity for magic co-opted by everybody else. Now, I'll, go, I'll go more into that in the next video. It's already seven, eight minutes. Goodbye.